it's kind of amazing that this other Tennessee seedling pawpaw is starting to finally, you know, branch out, you know, and look at all that new growth this year. <clears throat> I don't think it's just because I'm fertilizing it. I think it's probably because of age as well. And yes, it should get some new and faster growth because of the fertilizer, but the branching out and all that's, that's probably telling me it's ready to start spreading wider instead of just, you know, being a little straight stick going up in the air. It's probably four, four and a half feet uh, in the air and hopefully by six to eight feet, maybe one to two years, it'll start blooming. But I don't know that the other Tennessee seedling was probably close to 20 years old before it bloomed. So this guy may be 10 foot and 20, you know, 17 to 20 years old before it blooms, but I hope not. Hopefully this guy will do a little bit uh, faster and better. But it looks good, you know, it's in pretty much full shade or close to it. And it's it's getting some size on it and some good wide growth. Another year for the blood orange, and I really don't see a whole lot of blood oranges on here. You know, it's this guy's probably never had more than 15 on it. Um, maybe a little bit less. And it looks like they're mostly uh, at the top only. I did a video the other day and I talked about how it's starting to spread too. So maybe as it starts to spread wider, it'll uh, get more up there. I have no idea what's at the top, you know, 15 feet or whatever. But I see some uh, little uh, fruits at about the nine foot section, I guess, and maybe up. Um, it's kind of dark and hard to see here because of the amount of shade. And then the sunlight comes in it and kind of blinds you when you're looking but it's still yeah it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of fruit on it maybe one day it'll get to a size or whatever where it's ready to uh, flower and fruit more than it is to grow a red navel however is loaded with fruit it's dropping a lot we're in a drought so, you know, I'm fertilizing, but I'm not really watering too much back here because everything here is established. But this drought may, may make it drop a lot. I'm seeing it, it has dropped a lot. See those uh, yellow patches there? That's where it's already dropped fruit. So this is another one where you get like, maybe like 15 a year. And it probably has a couple hundred fruit on it or did. But like I said, there's a lot of fruit drop already. When we get some good rains, maybe in June, maybe it'll make it hold on to what it has, you know. But yeah, we, since we started this new fertilizer regimen, hopefully we'll get some growth and growth and get them big enough so we can get 100, 200 fruit on each one in a couple of years. This whole pear tree had a limited amount of blooms on it. I don't even remember what this is, if it was a hybrid Asian, you know, European pear or what. And you can see, I forgot, it's been so long. It's definitely got good growth on it. Um, and it might be hard to tell if there's fruit up there, you know, 18 foot plus in the air. Like the other uh, orange trees we just looked at. It's kind of in a location where it's dark and shady, but you get the sun glare you know coming through as you maybe can see it where it kind of makes everything hard to see um <clears throat> maybe in a couple months if if we get fruit we'll start to see some you know some round balls on them round you know the the pears on them there's nothing really in this area within about six or eight hundred feet that would uh pollinate it so it needs to get more size it needs a whole bunch more flowers you know to ensure pollination i'm looking at our uh panhandle uh pawpaw again and we got some new female flowers opening up there there um two there's one that looks like something began messing with it so maybe in the next couple days i need to come i see another one over there about eight nine foot in the air another one right there so yeah maybe we need to uh, pollinate it a third time in a day or two maybe Saturday or something 
try to get some more fruit and this this guy here is not open yet it's another female <clears throat> there's one there that's fixing to open it's a really small one comfrey is looking better by the day i probably said that a bunch of times but look how lush it is we may just uh, grow it in this five gallon tank uh container and just let it get big and then do root divisions or whatever you know in six months a year when this is like full of roots cassava is looking good gallingal ginger starting to shoot out some new leaves Take another look at the tithonia getting a little bit bigger not super fast growing so far the nasturtiums that uh there's three there it looks like so far probably get some more come out i think there's only like seven seeds or something in this pack so three out of seven so far have started to sprout and to get some uh, starts for sweet potatoes um, they're in a little tiny bit of water some of them are starting to root at the bottom um, these little guys may be too little to do so we might just put them in the ground and see what happens if they rot or if they whatever no roots yet on that one but let's see here that's not showing any roots i know one of these were showing roots this guy's so big let's try this guy yeah there's a little tiny white roots there nodules okay so yeah so we'll use them for starts and once they get like eight to twelve inches you can put them in the water for a couple days those individual sprouts or slips this is what they call them will root and then you can just put them in the ground the bigger they are the easier it is just to put them in the ground so you can clip a you know a foot or two foot one and just go straight in the ground without like putting it in water and it should be okay more, more of these hopefully papaya seedlings are coming out along with a bunch of weeds so tomatoes here starting to bloom I got some smaller ones underneath which aren't doing very well but these guys are so hard to like separate the roots got in intertwined or tangled up with each other so kind of gave up but these small ones probably won't do anything so we might just need to prune them out and just let the top two or three big ones grow i don't know yet these mallow or hibiscus seedlings are all like growing look in there I guess I did not need to put this many in a single pot. I did not know how, like, you know, how easy they were going to be to sprout, you know? Sometimes you put 10 seeds in the ground and get nothing. Other times you put 100 seeds in the ground and you get 100 seedlings, you know? That's for the few little spearmen and longevity, or Suriname spinach into little pots and stuff. I might, I put a little bit in the ground and I may give one or two little pieces of mint to somebody else and let them grow. So after it grows, you can snip it, reroot it, and make you a whole cluster of, uh, you know, whatever. And we still got a few that have a few uh, roots on them here. We put in the ground somewhere. Got several in pots and some that went through the pots. The roots went through the pots to the bottom and they kind of rooted in the ground as well. Well, that's about it. Pumpkins more mallow pumpkins so that's about it for this morning's little tour not really doing anything big here today i guess unless we do it later